life. Today I'm going to be DIYing expensive designer clothes. So the first item that I'm going to be DIYing is this Balenciaga pink denim jacket. And guys, it is one thousand pounds. One thousand pounds. Like think about what you could buy with one thousand pounds. So that's why I want to DIY it because I do actually really like the look at this. It just looks so nice. I really like the idea that it's like pink. I just feel like it looks really cool, but I don't want to spend a thousand pounds on a denim jacket. So that's why I'm trying to make it myself today. So I went online and I bought this white denim jacket from New Look. Having a white denim jacket isn't like a super rare thing. So if you already have a white denim jacket, then obviously that's free. But this was about, I think I got it 15 pounds on sale, but it was originally like 20, 25 pounds. So in comparison to like 1,000 pounds already, we're saving a lot. So yeah, I got this. This one's actually cropped, uh, but you don't have to get a cropped one because the original isn't cropped. And then I got these felt letters to write the Balenciaga logo. It's a pretty similar font, like I know it's not exactly the same and these felt letters were about eight pounds or something like that off Amazon, so true bargain. And then I have got some pink dye to dye my denim jacket with and this was also about like six or seven pounds off Amazon. So let's just get straight started into dyeing this. So I've already washed this because that's what you have to do before you do the dye because it will have all like stuff on it that you need to wash off. So I've got some hot water already in my saucepan, so I'm gonna go get some more. And this is something that I boiled a few moments ago, so I hope it will cool down a bit because on my instructions it said it needs to be almost boiling water. Right, I reckon that's gonna be enough water. Now it says per pound of fabric, you need to do half a bottle of liquid, so I really hope this isn't over two pounds. Okay, it's exactly one pound is what it's saying. I know it's some of it's not complete on it, but roughly half a bottle, so that's what we're gonna do. The thing is, this is quite a proper, like true pink. It says super pink, and the jacket is like a light pastel pink, so I'm, I don't want it to go too pink. Add wet fabric to dye bath, but it's not wet. Okay, so I need to wet this. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to, wow, water's dripping everywhere. Let's just put this straight in. Oh wow, it's looking pink already. So you need to stir it constantly, but it's like really tricky to stir it. I just realized what I'm literally doing. I'm literally cooking a jacket. Like it just looks so weird. Anyways guys, I'm pretty sure it's done now. On the bottle it says to leave them for 30 minutes, but since I don't want it to be like really, really pink, I want it to be a little bit lighter. So it's been about, I don't know, like 15, 20 minutes. I know it looks a bit dark at the moment, but it will wash and like, when I now rinse it out, it will not look as dark. Anyway, right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and rinse this out in my utility sink. So Mocorns, this is my finished jacket out of the washing machine. I've ironed it and it's obviously dry because if not, why would I iron it? Like, that's just so obvious. Anyways, I tried to iron it. Um, it looks better than before I ironed it, but still it doesn't look that good. I'm definitely not very good at ironing. It didn't come out quite the color I was expecting. I know I did use like a super pink dye, so I guess I should have expected that it would come out as super pink, but I soaked it in the dye for less time than it said on the box, but I feel like the second I put the jacket in, it just immediately went this color. I thought it would like slowly develop, but it didn't, so. So it's not quite the color, but it's still a really cool pink jacket. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be getting my letters, and I've got the picture here of the jacket. So I'm gonna try and get the letters in pretty much the same placement as it is on the actual jacket. So the N is literally on like this fold. I realized I maybe should have gone like a size up because this is a size six, but maybe if I'd gotten like a size eight, it probably will have still like fitted me. It just might look a bit oversized and um, the letters might have had more space since it's quite a small panel, but it obviously depends on the jacket you get. I'm just gonna peel off the sticky backing. I want it to be pretty straight, so luckily there's like this line here for me to use to line it up with. There. Okay, so now we're gonna work our way out. So let's do the C. It gets very stuck to your fingers. I really love wearing trainers. They've got bees and strokes on them and I just and stars as well. So I just thought they were really nice. But however, they are 
500 pounds. 500 pounds, guys, 500 pounds. So I'm gonna be trying to make a cheaper version, homemade. So these are the trainers that I got. I got them off New Look. You can obviously just get plain white ones, but I thought these ones, I know it's kind of cheating, but they've already got the blue and the red stripe on. Like when I saw these, I was like, oh my goodness, they are literally almost it already. Like, so I'm going to be embroidering them on. So I bought some cream thread and also this gold thread. The trainers were, it says 20 pounds on the sticker, but I actually bought them on sale, so they're a bit cheaper than that. And then these are like two pounds, two pounds. I'm now going to get started embroidering. I have never embroidered before, so this may be more tricky than I thought. This one's like an attempt. I don't know how it's gonna go. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but we're just gonna try. I feel like I've seen people do this, but people normally embroider like proper like fabric shoes, but these ones are pleather, so um. Right, I'm gonna start off with the stripe. I'll probably start off with the stripe in here. The only thing is, because these are like designed for just two stripes, there's not really like the spacing for it. Hopefully it'll look fine. So I'm just gonna draw a line like that. I've seen people like get these um sort of like patches, these embroidery looking patches. You could probably get beads and scars of those. I don't know why I didn't get those. I just didn't really think. Like I only just realized that you could probably do that. So um, that probably would have been a lot easier than me doing it from scratch. Probably gonna spend a long time doing this and I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do it. So we're gonna try. Now we're gonna try and get this in the hole. Wish me luck. Don't know if this is gonna be possible. But we're gonna try. I got it in, I got it in. Okay, right. We're going to get started embroidering. I have never done this before, so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't even know like what I'm doing or why I'm doing this. It's probably gonna be here for 10 years, so let's try. Oh dear, I don't feel like this is going to work. Okay, it's in. You just have to be careful with it. So I managed to get it in. So now um, let's get started embroidering. <laughs> I am awfully sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but this doesn't work. Basically, it's just the fabric of these shoes doesn't work well. Like, I can't go all the way through the shoe because, like, look how thick it is and it's, like, like hard. I don't know what it is, but, like, it's just, like, really hard and you can't make it go all the way through. So then if you just put it through the thin layer of, like, the outside layer, it just breaks the leather or the pleather, the vegan leather. And yeah, it just doesn't work. So um, I'm sorry about that, guys. If you did this, same thing with like patches, like I said about, or if you did it with um, like canvas shoes, like almost like Converse, those sorts of style of shoes, but not necessarily Converse, just like plain white plimsolls, then it would work, but not with this type of shoe, unfortunately. So um, I really like these trainers. Like they're nice just as it is. And I kind of don't want to poke loads of, miniature holes in them and completely destroy them so luckily I just did that to the inside so I'm gonna cut all this thread off and hopefully you won't really notice it when I wear them um so they're not completely destroyed that's why I'm stopping if not I just carry on and just try it but I don't really want to destroy the shoes so moving on to DIY number three I'm going to be trying to make these Balenciaga shoes and guess how much they cost guys 500 and 95 pounds. That's insane for a pair of very small heels. So these are the heels that I've got to make into those heels, <laughs> into the Balenciaga ones. So the original price is 23.99 pounds and these are from New Look, but I'm pretty sure I got them on sale as well. I basically got everything for these DIYs on sale. So they're all cheaper than the original price. Anyways, these are really cool and also they are vegan. What's really cool about New Look is they're actually working with the vegan society, which I just think is so cool. So they have like vegan stickers. Anyways, yeah, I just wanted to say about that because I thought it was so cool. So obviously those shoes have some sort of like fluff. I think it's feather. Obviously I'm vegan so I don't want to use feather and um, you can get cheap feather but those are still from birds and I don't want to, you know, that's not very nice at all. So I've got this synthetic fur here which will work pretty similarly. It's going to give like the same sort of like fun effect um, but it's obviously not feather but it's as close as I could get without it being horrible and you know. <laughs> Anyways, right, so I've got this. I bought this off Amazon. It was about like 10 pounds or something. It wasn't a lot. There's also a lot of spare stuff here. Um, so we're gonna be using a tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roughly cut. I don't wanna, like, I wanna give myself quite a bit of excess 
because basically what I'm gonna be doing is these straps here are gonna be where I stick this to. I'm gonna sew it on, but I obviously want it to fold underneath so then it looks like a nice neat edge rather than it being like, you know, you can see that bit. So I'm gonna give myself excess. I'm so close now, Miocons. I've sewed along there, along there, and along there. Now I've just got to sew this bit underneath so then it's nice and comfy. I feel like these are actually gonna be like the best shoes ever because this is like so soft and fluffy. It is just gonna feel so like comfortable. Anyways, right, I feel like I need to trim a little bit of the fabric just because I've got a bit too much excess. Right, yes, now we've got that underneath. I'm just gonna sew this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm now gonna sew this bit of fabric into it. It's gonna be a little tricky, but I think we can do it, boys. I think we can do it. Let's get started then, mates. Right, there we go. Now I'm just gonna carry on sewing it so it's all in place. So Mucons, this is my finished shoe. Now, I know in the original Balenciaga shoe, they don't have this strap bit here, but I just feel like if I cut this off, because that was what I was originally planning to do, it's gonna like, be so unsecure and also like the fluff does look really cool and if someone like told me that I had to wear these shoes I wouldn't like not wear them well obviously if they told me I had to then I'd have to but you know what I mean like I wouldn't be super super embarrassed but I do feel like I prefer the original shoe because I haven't done it to this shoe yet and um just between the two I feel like I just prefer the plain normal shoe rather than with the fur. I don't know, I just, something looks a bit off about it. Maybe it's because I've got the strap, but if I cut the strap off, it just won't even stay on my shoe. Like, I don't know how those shoes work. Like, how can that like stay on your foot? Like, I don't feel like there was anything to go in between your toes or anything. So like, it just like your foot is gonna slip out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm just not sure about these ones. I'm, I feel like I might just cut this fabric off and then just like have the normal shoes because I really like these shoes, but not the first, so. Um, sorry, Balenciaga. I tried and I think I may have failed. <laughs> for my fourth DIY, I'm, what's that for? I hate for my Second, but I haven't found that. That's really stupid. For my fourth DIY, I'm going to be trying to make this Machino shopper bag. So I thought this was really nice. This looks pretty like I don't know. I just really like the look of this bag, but it is 758 pounds. Yeah. So we're gonna try and make it cheaper. So I bought this bag off New Look, which is pretty similar. Um, I might take this strap off and just use these ones because I feel like that kind of looks more similar. But there is also this option, which I actually prefer when bags have two options of how you can wear it. But I guess um, Floss Shopper is like, you hold by the handles. Anyway, this was about 20 pounds, something like that. Not too much, especially in comparison to 750, eh? And these were about eight pounds or something like that off Amazon. So um, these are some iron-on letters. So I'm gonna try and iron them on. If that doesn't work, I can try and sew them on. Or you could even like use, like a hot glue gun could work, I don't know. Many different ways to sticking letters onto a bag. So we're gonna try to iron it on. So I'm in my utility cupboard. I'm now about to iron on the letters. I'm a little bit nervous because I feel like once I've put them on, I can't go back. So we're just gonna start off with the H in the middle. Feels like the bag's about to fall off. Let's just, um, let's just do it. Has that done it? Has that done it? Let's see. Um, okay. At least I know where to put it back on. Maybe I need to hold it on. I don't, I think I may have thrown the instructions in the bin. Um, so that probably wasn't a very good idea. Let's see how that's done. Why does it keep doing that? Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way round. I thought it was like the felt bit that you, that goes on the front, but maybe it's like this bit. <laughs> I mean, there's gonna be a letter. There's gonna be a random letter H stuck to this tea towel now. Predicting the future. Let's see if I can predict the future. <laughs> so I guess I can predict the future. Okay, maybe ironing it on doesn't work with this fabric, so I'm gonna have to try a different way. I've literally just been thinking for the past five minutes how I can fix this situation since it didn't iron on. Um, so I thought maybe glue, but we actually don't have any glue. So if you guys have glue and you're trying to do this, then maybe you could just use super glue like I said earlier, but I don't have any of that. And I'm thinking about it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to sew it on. Like this is just way too thick for my like needle to go through. And I just don't feel like it's gonna look very good. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry guys. I don't feel like this one worked either. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you're new around here, make sure 
to click subscribe and also check out this video here and hopefully um the jacket helped you because i did actually really like that jacket i think that one came out quite nicely so i'll see you guys in my next one bye